Hey guys, we're back and now we're just about ready to jump into some practical JavaScript. After all the hard work we've put in learning the core language and learning about things like objects and so on, we're going to take advantage of that knowledge and in this video tutorial, we're going to learn how to use the JavaScript forms object, which is found under the document object right here in form. We're going to learn how we can use that to navigate through HTML forms to do some basic validations. So I've popped over into a web editor here and let's create a very simple form. I'm going to do this in Dreamweaver just for the sake of simplicity. So action. Now, I guess I'm going to go through some form basics here along the way, just in case, just to, as a refresher, if you will. So the action is the attribute of a form that uh, tells us, well, tells the form rather, the browser, where to submit the form data to. The form data is the form information people type in. So we're going to type in, I don't know, process uh, form. This is an important one. You're going to have to ask your programmer this, whether they want to go with method get or post. Post is probably the method they're going to want to use because, well, I'm not going to get into all the details here. You can check out my killerphp.com videos that I talk all about this. Post, though, is used to send a lot of data, whereas get can only send a very limited amount of data. So we're probably just going to use post. Encoding type, uh, We'll just go with the mo the default, which is uh, multi-part form data, but we're just going to leave it like this. And we're going to give the form a name. This is very important for our JavaScript work. You don't necessarily have to use a name, but it's a lot easier to use a name. So I'm going to call it, I'll just call it send email. And the target, I'll just say uh, self. So, okay. So Dreamweaver here generates our form. When it comes to JavaScript, this name attribute is what is really important because that allows us to target this form with JavaScript. We'll get into that a little bit later. So let's add a couple of text fields. Name, uh, let's call it first. No value, size. We'll leave everything else uh, okay. Defaulted. Another text box. And I'll say uh, last. Okay. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll just add a button here. Button uh, submit. This is uh, as simple a form as you're going to get. We'll look at it here. Not very exciting, but um, it will allow us to now write some JavaScript code to work with this form. Ideally, we would be writing our code, our JavaScript code, in an external editor. But for the sake of our videos, I'm just going to do it here. Script, go language, go JavaScript, and we go, uh, you see here, source, that will allow us to link to an external file. We'll do that in another video, but anyway, I'll just close this up. And uh, there we go. So that's it. Here's our little block. So what we'll do now is we'll start with some simple JavaScript to run around this form, and then we'll get into some validation a little bit later. So the first thing I want to do is I want to use JavaScript to get some information about the form for us and to display it. Now, this may seem like kind of a useless task, but later on you would actually use it in other more complex scripts. So just, just bear with me. The point of this is just to give you an idea of how to do these kind of things. So let's create a variable, var, form equals we know from our object hierarchy and I'm going to uh, pop that open right now we know in the object hierarchy that the form object falls under the document object so what we need to do is when we're writing code within the document object you always have to start with document you don't have to start with window and you don't have to start with navigator, but you do have to start with document though. So we want to go document dot form to get to the form object. So 
watch this. So we go back into our code. We go document dot and our editor gives us a nice selection of items here. It knows that the document object, it knows about the document object, Dreamweaver does, and it gives us a whole slew of items here. So uh, we're going to go document.forms. Okay, so let's alert out what the underscore form will give us. So let's save that. And we hit refresh, object HTML collection. So JavaScript identifies the forms object as an object and has a collection of HTML elements. That's the rough translation. So let's go a little bit deeper into this now. So now what I've done is I've gone a level deeper. I've gone document.forms. So I'm saying, remember dots are pointers, right? They point to object. So we said go into the document object, then go into the forms object and find the send mail form, right? We called it send mail right here. That's the name. So let's, uh, let's save that and let's view it undefined. So what that tells us is that for some reason, JavaScript can't find this. And the reason it can't find it is because this JavaScript is sitting on top of this form. And remember, HTML pages are read and processed from the top down. So what we have to do is we either have to put this in a function so that it won't run right away, and then we have to call the function from a button or something, or we just put our JavaScript after the form. So this form will be in JavaScript memory before this has a chance to fire off. So let's see how that works. Here we go. Now we get something here, object HTML form element. So this time JavaScript is telling us that this is a form element. It's a form. Let's take what we've learned in previous videos and we're going to go like so. We're going to create our function, function check underscore form. Oops, get that close. All right, so now our function will not, our code rather, will not fire off until we call this function here. So let's call it by creating a, we'll just create a uh, paragraph and we're gonna say check form. And then we're gonna go, let me just move this into screen view. So let's, um, on click check form now you notice I put the semicolon it's not absolutely necessary you only really need to put a semicolon if you were calling let's say multiple functions so JavaScript would know okay we're calling one function period next function period but if you're only using one function in a call you just have to go like this anyway so let's save that Refresh, check form, there we go. That's working better. So that's what we're gonna do. Instead of putting our JavaScript down here, we're just gonna use a check form button here. So we've identified that this is a form using JavaScript. So let's, uh, let's check to see if JavaScript can tell us the method that we're using. So to check what method we're using, we just have to say, you know, check the forms object, check the send mail form, and tell us what method you're using. So we know we should get post. So let's see what happens. Refresh, method post. So you see we're transversing or walking the document object model, the document tree rather, and with JavaScript. And we're using our pointers, which are the dots. And we're getting information about this form with JavaScript. Before we get into other examples, I want to just clarify that now I've been referencing the document object and then I said we go to the forms object 
and then I've been specifying the particular form as identified by its name attribute. That's where you need the name attribute. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that. If we go back to our Java language hierarchy here, we go document.form, we, we can just actually go right to the form object like that. We can skip things, right? We can go like this, and if I save this, refresh, it still works. So from now on, we're gonna use this method where we just say document, and then we give the name of the form, and then we can go forward with the rest of our operations. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna use JavaScript to check to see the value held in an input box. So I've changed the variable here, and var text box equals document dot send mail, that's name and a form, and the next thing we gotta do is use the name of the input box. So this one is called first. If I was doing a real form, I would use a more descriptive name, it would be like first name, last name, but you know, for the video. So I'm gonna go dot first, and I'm gonna say dot value. So this is basically gonna tell us what is the value held in the form element with the name of first. So um, let's, uh, well actually, you know what? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just see what JavaScript thinks of what this text box is. So we'll, we'll, see, we'll check that out right now. So let's launch this up. Object HTML input element. So JavaScript is smart enough to know that this is an input text box. Kind of cool, no? Not only can we use JavaScript to talk, to check out the forms, we can actually ask JavaScript to tell us what type of element the particular form element happens to be. In this case, we could check if it's an input or if it's a button or whatnot. So anyway, let's uh, now check its value. So uh, let's alert that out. You see it's blank, right? But that makes sense because if you see our form has no value in it, right? It has no value here. So let's uh, let's give it a default value and see what happens. So we're gonna go value equals, actually, just put my first name, I guess. So we save that. Let's see what happens, save. So now we have Stefan and of course, we alert out Stefan. So now we've used JavaScript another step further. We've actually used it to determine what the value is in this checkbox. Pretty simple, right? So what happens if we wanted to assign a new value to what's being held in this checkbox here, no, this input box here rather. So we should, uh, we could do that very easily actually. We could go so uh, text box, we check it out, document.sendmail.value, then we'll alert it out. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna say, you know what, let's change, let's change the value of text box. So we're gonna go text box is now equal to, I don't know, Nick. Okay, we'll say Mick. And let's alert out text box again. So first time around, it should give us our default value, which is uh, Stefan. And then we're gonna change it to Nick. And then we're gonna have JavaScript to check the value of text box again. And we'll see what value it gives us. So let's uh, go back here, refresh, and check form, Stefan, Mick. So as you can see, we're using JavaScript not only to check to see the current value, we're then telling JavaScript to change its value to, uh, to something else, and then we're checking what that new value is, of course. You'll notice that even though we're changing the value of the form, this hasn't changed. So I refresh this. Right now, the, according to the browser, the value in this text box is Stefan, and now after I hit OK, the script will continue to run, and it will change it to Mick and it becomes Mick, which you notice hasn't changed here. That's something we'll address in the next video.